Hi, I'm Sabrina Richards, and I'm joined today with, by Dr. Akila Rajan to discuss how fat, fat stores communicate with the brain and fruit flies. Dr. Rajan, can you tell us a little bit more about your latest findings? Um, my lab has been looking into how um, flies sense nutrient stores, specifically fat stores, and how they communicate to the brain. And we knew uh, prior in our, from our prior work that um, there was a certain region in the brain in which this crosstalk occurred, but exactly the synaptic point of contact and how this was regulated was unclear. Um, and in this study, what we identified was that um, a protein from the fly fat, a hormone, um, goes and modifies the synaptic number, and by doing so, alters the ability of these neurons to sense fat. So why is it important for uh, the body to understand how much fat we have? This is a crucial uh, information that a body has to process to make decisions on its fitness and every you know possible aspect you can think of. So you're looking at the way that a uh, hormone released by the fat communicates with neurons that actually regulate insulin release. So what does insulin do and why would it be important for fat to regulate how our bodies release it? What the fat is doing is communicating to a central brain circuit, telling the circuit that, please, uh, fat is coming in, allow insulin to be released. And insulin, after it's released, it's going and storing fat, but it also wants to keep its own release under control. So you sort of discovered more about how the body is sort of balancing this information out and, and these signals out to, to sort of reach a, a balanced point. Yes. Until now, it's known that the body has these mechanisms, but it's just very hard to pinpoint one particular, you know, entire circuit by which this occurs. And that's something we've um, uncovered based on our studies. And, and so understanding also how it works in a normal system is sort of the first step to understanding what has gone wrong, um, you know, in cases of, say, obesity or insulin resistance or, you know, when, when um, it's out of whack. Just studying what happens during obesity or during insulin resistance is what a lot of science is. It's important to do it that way, but it's also important to have a vantage point of when something slowly breaks down and we're at the first step of how it's even being set up. And the next step, our goal is to direct it towards understanding how it breaks down. So thanks so much for joining me and talking about your work, Akila. This is Sabrina Richards for Fred Hutch.